All right, a pretty uh, bad end to an awful week on Wall Street. The Dow closed down 414 points on Friday, and for the week it fell 6.9 percent. That's the deepest weekly plunge since the recession in 2008. And sources are telling CNN that President Trump is blaming the Federal Reserve and higher interest rates for the market slide. He's even thinking of firing Fed Chairman Jerome Powell. CNN's politics and business correspondent Christina Aleshi has more. Frederica, a brutal week in the market. The Dow and the S&P now on track for their worst December since the Great Depression and their worst yearly performance in a decade. This week, the selling began in earnest on Wednesday when the Federal Reserve raised interest rates. Investors got really nervous that the central bank was weaning this economy off of easy money. We've had historically low interest rates now for over 10 years, and that's helped boost the economy. When interest rates are low, consumers are more incentivized to buy houses and cars and, of course, stocks. Rising interest rates might have the opposite impact, and that is what spooked Wall Street. Add to that, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell disappointed investors by making it sound like interest rate hikes are baked in for 2019, and that sent markets even lower. Adding to the negativity, President Trump, who tweeted on Thursday that he was willing to partially shut down the government over border wall funding. Even after one of his economic advisors tried to assure the market that a short and partial shutdown would not have lasting economic impact, the president took to Twitter to emphasize the shutdown could be long. On Friday, the Federal Reserve tried to repair some of the damage. New York Fed president clarifying the Fed will monitor what's going on in the financial markets and future hikes really depend on economic data going forward. But overall, a very volatile week for Wall Street and it ended with investors still deeply concerned about the impact of the ongoing trade war with China, a global economic slowdown, and the stimulus from tax cuts wearing off. Frederica? Thanks so much, Christina. Uh, I want to bring in now Michael Wersthorn. He is a markets reporter for The Wall Street Journal. Michael, good to see you. Good, good All to right, see you, too. So how much of this you know, market decline can be pinned on the higher interest rates and the Federal Reserve? I mean, you've, you've seen since October, since Jerome Powell has been talking about higher interest rates, and every time he's gone out and talked to the market about his rate plans, you've seen the market react negatively to that. Interest rates have played a big part in that. And, and as Christina was just saying, there is this resetting of valuations going on. Um, but, but that said, it's, it adds to this uncertainty. And the markets mm -hmm. don't like uncertainty. They don't like the fact that Jerome Powell is, is looking toward the future and unsure as to where rates need to go to say that, that we're now at this neutral rate. We don't need to raise rates, rates much further. Um, you know, that said, with the, the, the shutdown now just adds to, to all the unpredictable or uncertain elements that, that investors really need to concern themselves about. And, uh, and for a lot of investors, they just want to see some, some surety, some, some mm -hmm. sureness in terms of where the economic growth is going, where yeah. interest rates ultimately need to go, and what that's going to then mean for, for yeah. some of the other problems that are going on as well in terms of trade tensions and, uh, and, and whether economic mm -hmm. growth truly is slowing. Right. So it's a conglomeration of things, not necessarily pinned on, you know, one thing I'm hearing from you, meaning like the interest rates, um, that kind of volatility, uncertainty, even in, you know, U.S. government, you know, it, working trade deals, et cetera. So right now we're hearing, you know, from the president, I mean, he's sending smoke signals, you know, that um, he's considering firing, you know, the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell. Um, what potential effect would that have? And is it that easy? Uh, so several investors have already said that that any sort of movement like that would really spook the markets just because, you know, they, they've already taken, you know, several months to get used to Jerome Powell and sort of his delivery and how he talks about the markets. And you're still seeing the markets get get used to that, get get more um, used to how he speaks about things, how he describes things, and how he forecasts things. Removing Jerome Powell would would in inject a ton of uncertainty as well as, as send a message to investors that now you have a White House that's looking to interfere in, uh, in, in fiscal policy, and that could be troubling to a lot of investors. Um, from what I understand, it's, it's not that easy to remove Jerome Powell, um, and there could be a backlash, but, but it might ultimately come down to whether or not um, legislators would want to back up that move or not and, and say um, that, that you know, the Federal Reserve is supposed to be um, not sort of subjected to the whims of the, of the White House. Michael Wurstern, good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you.